All right, let's call this meeting to order. April 1st, happy April Fool's Day, everybody. Uh, call the meeting to order here. We can go right into our consent agenda. We have the Nibala Federal Co-Holder Agreement, looking for select board approval, and Town Hall Exterior Column Award, La Rochelle Construction, Most Holy Redeemer Lease Agreement for Council on Aging, select board signs, and then we have warrants PR2018 and PR2019. So moved. Second. Any discussion about any of those? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Is John on the meeting tonight or is he? He's right there, he's unmuted. John? All right there. Okay, I just didn't hear him on that, so I didn't know if uh, he was there or not. He, he's there. <laughs> Ooh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, and now we can open it up for public comments. Um, I don't know if anyone wants to chat uh, regarding public comments or... It can... looks... It looks like there's a lot of guests. If you're okay, I'll just run through, unmute them, and ask them if they have something to comment on. Uh, okay. Is that good? I guess so. Let's try it out. This is All new right. territory. Okay, so Lynn Gray, are you here for public comments? I'm here for the Hadleaf um, recreational marijuana permit. Okay, we will come back to you. Thank you. Okay. Oops, sorry. Tony Pipchinski, are you here for public comments? Tony. Okay. All right. Okay. <laughs> Let's just move. Um, I'm trying to unmute Dylan and Denise, but I don't think they're letting me unmute them. Dylan and Denise, right, do y'all? We're, we're just here for fun. <laughs> okay, well, enjoy the show. Um, Quarantine's right. really getting boring when you're tuning into these. Um, Andrew, are you here for public comments? Yes, I am. Oh, no, I'm, okay. no, I'm not here for public comments. I'm here for Hadley. I'm sorry. Okay, we will come back to you. Thank you. Evian, Ivan, Sahara, are you here for public comments? No, I apologize. Please. No, you're fine. It's uh, Ivan Shahara. No, we're here for the recreational marijuana. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Jim Ballerini, are you here for public comments? Matthew McTeague, I recognize your name, so I know that you're here for the same thing as Andrew. Dr. McKenzie, are you here for public comments? No, sorry. No, no, okay. no, no, no. I should just say I'm lonely. I should say I'm lonely. Um, you're unmuted, Evelyn. <laughs> are you here for public comments? <laughs> I'm here for entertainment. <laughs> okay, well, thank you. Uh, Will Kay, are you here for public comments? Uh, no, Will? that's that's not Will Kay. It's Alan. Oh, okay, Alan Weinberg. That's me. Okay, are you here for public comments, sir? I, I am not, ma'am. All right, thank you very much. I will change your name to Alan Weinberg on our screen. Oh, thank you. Hi, phone number ending zero two zero six. Are you here for public comments? No, I'm here for the mint dispensary uh, application. Okay, thank you. And phone number 4384, are you here for public comments? Hello? Hello? All right. I think okay. We're yeah, thank there you, Jennifer. Gotta, we got to figure that out. <laughs> Um, 
Okay. Ooh. Okay. Those are late. Uh, COVID-19 update. Do, David, do you want to give us a quick update based on what you know right now? Um, I don't know if there are any updates today, but don't know if you know anything right this minute. Uh, people should be uh, going to www.hadleyma.org for information from the town having to do with COVID-19 and the coronavirus and our responses to uh, that uh, latest information, helpful uh, connections, uh, links to web pages that have uh, resource material for businesses, for individuals, for families, uh, um, and... Uh, there is a letter of support for the Hampshire Mall that is requested. Uh, there is a, uh, a uh, sample letter from the town of Kingston to Governor Baker. If you could take a look at that and see if that's something that you want to sign off on. That's attached to your, to your agenda. Um, just wondering, there's a lot of programs out there right now for businesses and different, uh, services. It, do, do you know if, what is this? Is it specifically for? This is requested on behalf of the Hampshire Mall in order to show the town's support for the, the major business that it is. Um, and uh, and uh, basically expressing our support for that as well as the larger business community. So it doesn't seem to be acting or it basically just says it's a financial hardship time, which I think everybody in the world is aware of. So I guess I'm not clear what we're what we're signing on to. It looks Lynn, like Gray, to, Lynn right. Gray, do you want to speak yep. uh, more directly no. to the uh, letter? Yeah, I'm, I'm here. It's a forbearance um, for commercial lenders, um, basically requesting their, the local town support and, you know, basically a plea to the governor to enact um, that the commercial lenders review this information and, and allow commercial businesses the forbearance on mortgages for the 90 days. The state of New York has already enacted that. Um, we're just asking that the state of Massachusetts, um, you know, give the same acknowledgement for Massachusetts businesses. It's not specific to Hampshire Mall. It's specific to commercial lenders and commercial businesses that are, are experiencing this hardship. I don't see any problem endorsing something like this, basically saying we don't want businesses in our town to go out of business because they have to pay their mortgage when they don't have any incoming revenue. I think that's a good thing to sign on to. So, I mean, if just expressing support for something like that, um, I think that's probably good, but I don't know if any, how anybody else feels. I mean, we all have support for the businesses. This is a very difficult time for them. Um, I certainly don't have a problem uh, supporting them and uh, hoping that, you know, hopefully it'll be over soon, but I don't know if it'll help them with any aids or small business loans or anything like that with uh, us giving them our support. And if they can help apply for uh, money, then that would be fine with me. I don't have an issue with it either. I'd prefer if this was something coming from us though, rather than a Kingston, Select yeah. that's, that's just a sample. Yeah, we provided a sample, um, you know, requested information or language. Um, we, we shared the Kingston language because that is um, something that the town of Kingston out um, east has already endorsed. Um, we're seeking the same, you know, as a company that's based in New York, like I said, the state of New York has already endorsed this um, and, and pushed this forward and it's been approved. Um, but our company is based in New York. Um, our 
Massachusetts Government Affairs Office has been requesting support for the Massachusetts centers as well. So we shared with you the Kingston letter because that is um, what has already been um, elevated at their level, but we also, you know, have suggested language, if you will, for a letter to support, um, you know, from the town of Hadley as well, um, given our business is based there. I'll make a motion to support that letter. Yeah, I'll second that. Okay, any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, I just spoke to John Muscovitz and he got kicked off and he's rejoining. He said, go ahead, he'll be there in a minute. <laughs> So uh, following up on that, a request has come from the Central Hampshire County Veterans Service District uh, for the, the town of Hadley's select board to order that the uh, flag be flown at half mast uh, from sun up to sundown next Wednesday uh, in honor of the 13 veterans who uh, passed away in the soldiers home in Holyoke. So moved. Oh, second. Okay, all those in favor of that? Aye. Uh, next up, you'll be talking about changing the election date, um, but before that, uh, there is pending legislation that's been passed by the House, it's now in the Senate, to give to cities and towns the ability to defer their, um, their annual town meeting. Uh, there are a lot of uh, moving pieces to this legislation. Very difficult to tell you with the precision what's going to be contained in it, but at, at the very least, there'll be a provision to allow towns to hold town meeting after June 30th. You're to, uh, by law, we're supposed to... Where'd you go? David, we, we lost you. He's a lost soul. Okay. I wonder if we can, uh, yeah. Jennifer, would you mind getting a hold of him and just seeing if he could maybe join by phone instead of over the internet? I'm already doing it. Okay, thank hey, you. Susan, Susan Lasky wanted me to ask while he's frozen, are there any tax implications to the letter to the no. mall? David? Um, I don't think so. we should probably hear from uh, Linda Sanderson or if people come in for rebates or something that we should have further discussion on for sure if people are um, somehow if they need some I don't know what you would call it Molly help me out here what what would you call it for people that need assistance um, can you hear me now can you hear me now we can hear you, David, yes. Okay, thank you. Where, where did I cut off? Uh, town meeting date, legislation, uh, possible Pending. to meet after June 30th. Yeah, hope, hope there's a million pieces moving on this one, so uh, hard to say with precision what's going to be in it, uh, and I'll keep the board uh, apprised as to its progress and the results and how we may take advantage of the opportunities contained within it. Uh, other than that, just to remind everybody, to, if you're looking for information about COVID-19 in the town of Hadley, go to www.hadleyma.org. There is a page there with all sorts of information and handy links for everybody. Okay. Can we ask Mike if he, and he's on, if he has any updates for us at all that he would like to share? Uh, let me go grab him. Someone just came in. Hold on. Okay. Thank you. This is Randy Iser. Can anybody hear me? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, we can. we can hear you. Okay, good. I just got on. I'm trying to figure this foolish thing out. <laughs> Aren't we all? <laughs> I know today was the first uh, day where the the fire department uh, was 
doing the uh, working with the senior center to deliver groceries to seniors. Yeah. So I don't yeah. know. I haven't heard how that went. I know that was today, though. I had talked to Mike, and I guess there was quite a number that needed that service. So that would be interesting to see how it went. Yeah. And one other thing uh, on the COVID-19 I wanted to say too, is it seems like the Department of Public Health does not want us to give out numbers of how many people in Hadley are currently in, infected with COVID-19. So those numbers are something that I think there's a lot of debate about if they should be published or not. But right now it seems like we're gonna have a hard time getting those numbers and just to make people aware that that isn't coming from us, that's coming from the Department of Public Health. But there was, also, there was also a thing that was published though that uh, uh, 69 cases uh, in Hampshire County, yep. and it's a whole page. It doesn't specifically say, um, but it does say where they were. It also says where all the testing was done um, throughout the state. So, I mean, those numbers are available. And it's not, it's not pinpointing any specific town or city uh, in Hampshire County, but 69 have a confirmed number at this point. Hey, Christian, do we have actual guidance from DPH on this? Because I feel like we've been over this a hundred times in the last couple of weeks, and we keep hearing that they're asking us not to release the information, but when we ask DPH or the Board of Health or anybody for actual some regulation or directive not to share that information, nobody can share that. All they can say is that we've been asked not to release the information. But every town in the surrounding area is doing it, and I think it's some information that needs to be out there. Yeah, I, I agree, and that's why I say it's debate, is because it's a matter of will, will we get those numbers published um, based on what we would like versus what the Department of Public Health and the Board of Health is, is giving us. So... They actually um, have, they actually have listed uh, the reported deaths from uh, March 31st uh, through what has happened through the uh, the area of how many have passed. Uh, patient was hospitalized, uh, was not hospitalized. So all those numbers are pretty much available to us that actually were posted. Um, Hi, this is Mike. Can I, yeah, Mike, we, we were stalling until you were on there. So yeah, so I, us now. I've been listening. So every yeah. day your SIT rep that goes out, um, the, the uh, state numbers up at mm -hmm. the top section, all that information is public record that goes out every day. Uh, mm -hmm. That's all, basically you click on a link and it takes you to the, uh, the state website and it does have all those numbers. Mm -hmm. um, and it, you know, it goes down, you know, age, the age of folks that have passed away and their, their conditions. So mm -hmm. that's all, it's all on that. Uh, I haven't heard anything from M Emma from Board of Health saying that we're, we shouldn't be putting in what we're watching versus what we've, we've, uh, you know, what the number that we have of confirmed. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'll be updating that up tonight that we post every night. Um, so I haven't heard anything different. Yeah. And I think uh, Cooley is actually very much alert and, you know, posting what, what they are dealing with too. So, um, and I don't need to reiterate that right now, but there are, you know, that's also information from the hospital. Holyoke Hospital finally has released numbers down where they are too today. So um, all hospitals are chiming in on this also. So. I just make one more statement, Mr. Chair. Yes, go ahead, Mike. Yeah, we were waiting if you had also to, we were wondering how it went today, the senior meal delivery. Um, yes. So uh, we we went, we did it. <laughs> uh, Yay. We some, yeah, everybody got their groceries this afternoon. Uh, we did we did find some challenges and that's why we did it. So we're gonna we'll definitely have it improved for the next one. But it all worked out. Uh, there are shortages at all the grocery stores. Um, so, you know, folks, if they didn't get something, everybody was very nice about it. So we told them that you would look the next time to go shopping. Uh, so we're going to, we're going to clean up the logistics issues that we had. And, uh, I think it's, everybody was extremely happy to have us come out and, 
and drop stuff for them. So I think it's a really important thing uh, to have happen for the town. And we'll start getting the volunteers involved as well. Uh, every, everybody uh, that we delivered to received a pair of gloves and guidance from the Council on Aging on how to decontaminate the groceries. Um, so everybody got that information with a pair of gloves so that they can clean things up before they put it in their fridge. And then it just gave some other guidance. So I think it worked out really well. Um, that's what I got. Perfect. How many did you do, Mike? I'm pretty sure that we had 18. It was either 18 or 20 today. Great. Great. Thank you very much. Yeah. I just want to thank all the firefighters that helped out doing it. Uh, basically it was all hands on deck today just to get it out. And, uh, some of our, uh, probationary firefighters, uh, Gage, Lynn Higgins, and Emma Elson. I'd like to thank them. They did all the shopping for us and they did a really good job. And the rest of the folks that stepped up today's crew and myself and Evan, we all just went down there just so we could figure out to make sure it worked well. We packaged up everything and got it out. Great. Thank you so much. And thank them also for doing that. I will. Yeah. Thanks to you. Okay. Uh, let's move on to the annual town election date change. Uh, this is something right now the school has asked us uh, to move it. We had it originally scheduled from May 12th, uh, moving it to May 16th. Um, and I don't know, I'm assuming we haven't gotten the ballots printed yet, so we can still do this. And I don't know if we want to consider moving it further out or if that's good, uh, just where we're at as far as all getting um, where we feel we're going to be uh, in, in this uh, isolated uh, social distancing situation, how much longer that's going to happen. I know schools are scheduled to reopen May 4th, um, but I don't know how this date will fit in with everything that's going on. I don't. I believe that they won't reopen. Um, yeah. If given the nature that we haven't actually, from what I heard today, that we haven't actually peaked yet. Yeah. Uh, which would be another two to three weeks out. So I'm assuming that we're not even going to uh, do it at that point. Uh, colleges have closed for the semesters. I think that our schools will be closing for the semesters. I think if we follow guidelines, we're uh, allowing, you know, again, 10 people in and making sure we don't have any more than that at one time in there voting or doing anything of that nature. I mean, Jessica will set it up um, and follow whatever guidelines we need to per CDC uh, on how we need to get that done in a, a appropriate distancing and things of that nature. Does Jessica have any thoughts on that? Um, well, I am anticipating a larger than normal people voting absentee. Mm -hmm. The state has allowed early voting for this local election. Absentee and early voting are very similar. Mm -hmm. uh, we do have a few differences. I'm trying to get the word out as much as I can to folks that even if everything was technically over with in May, I'm sure there's still folks that would still be cautious about going out to public areas so again i'm just encouraging everyone if they are uncomfortable in any way to just send me an application and we will send it by mail do you think that um if people wanted to vote do you think i know they're talking about primaries and things like that um in doing uh mail-in i know that where my nephew lives out in spokane washington that's actually what they did for their uh primary out there everybody got ma mailed one uh and then they had to mail it back in is that something that we would consider here or not at this point well i'm confused because basically that is the absentee process is this something that okay. the town did just sent out a ballot to every single voter correct yes how did they do that for a primary with the different ballots to choose from i washington state i think it, i think they did it probably and how they were uh how they, what do you call it, either Democrat or Republican? That's what got mailed to them. Well, we have over 2,000 unenrolled. How would you determine which ballot they got? That's why I'm just confused. Yeah, I don't know. They'd have to call in, I guess, or send you a request. 
But basically for the, I don't think the state would allow that. But um, if they want to receive the early or absentee ballot, it is a simple application. But I need a hard copy signature. Once it's on file, it's valid for the entire year if they choose. Mm -hmm. As soon as we get the ballots and they get mailed out. So what do you think we could do, Jessica, if everybody didn't do the uh, write-in ballots? Um, could we not set something up that was safe uh, in the auditorium, um, not having stations, you know, six feet apart? Um, I mean, normally but, that's how our booths are set up anyway, but it's yeah. just you know, one person per booth. Yeah. That's kind of what you're looking at, because normally if you remember the booths are approximately five to six feet away from each other. Um, and, not, I, and not allowing more than 10 people in that room at a time. So that would have to be counters and uh, registers also. So we'd really have to, you know, just well, like. The I'd be working on a skeleton crew. I would anticipate, again, a majority of people um, voting on the phone. So I don't see the long lines going up at the presidential election type of thing. There mm -hmm. are three contested races. I would caution against having people to send a blank ballot in. Um, once the ballot, once I do receive the ballots, even if for some unforeseen reason we change the date, we can still use those ballots, even though the date has changed. Yeah. Okay. But we would take every precaution as suggested moving forward. Yep. Do you suggest that we move it out to May sixteenth? Would be that would that be your recommendation for safety? I mean, your guess is as good as mine. Um, I don't see why not at this point. Yeah, we'll but make that difference. Know. Yeah, I'll make a motion to uh, extend out the voting until May 16th uh, and then go from there and right. let you, anybody want to second that? Second. David, did uh, you have something? Yeah, so if, uh, we need to have a little bit of discussion here. Um, we've had a, uh, there's concern about how the, the logistics are going to work out for disinfecting the uh, area before and after the uh, uh, the actual voting. Um, Mr. Mish has expressed his concern that uh, that the school is not set up to do that disinfecting uh, as well as it could be done. Um, I don't know, Mike Spanknable, if you have some insights as to how that might happen. It looked like um, Jeff might have wanted to say something, uh, but he's muted. Is uh, Jennifer, are you there to unmute him? We can barely hear you. Oh, no. Now you got my disease. Yeah. <laughs> I can hear you. Mike Spagnable, I'm going to mute you for a moment. Okay. Jeff, go yeah. ahead. I might be able to make out what you're saying. Okay. Can, here I go. So my concern is not is if we open the school on May 4th. Um, May 16th. May 16th. No, we would open the school on May 4th for the students, and then the election would be May 16th. Uh, I didn't feel comfortable that having the students in there for that amount of time, not knowing who's sick, who's not sick, some of them could be sick and not know it, and then bringing the general population in the next day to vote, I just felt very uncomfortable with that. I, I don't feel confident that I could get the building disinfected properly uh, so that I feel comfortable that way. I just thought the solution would be uh, wait until the school calendar year is over, whether that's June 21st or, or even if they cancel school for the rest of the year, if they cancel for the rest of the year, that I think that May 16th would work. My concern is bringing, having the students there and then bringing you know, the older folks in to vote. I just I don't feel good about that at all. Can we do this in increments, Jeff, and, and say May 16th uh, with the thoughts that they're not going to reopen the school to students? Oh, yeah, that, I, that would be wonderful for, for my feeling. Yeah, I'm just worried about, it, you know, commingling with the kids. We can certainly change that at another meeting. I think 
since everything is closed down, uh, even at work where we are closed until, you know, no new anything until May 4th. So, I mean, that's the same thing as what the schools are going on. So I, I think if we did it May 16th and if and for someone, for God's known reason, they sent them back to school, then we would change it again. Okay, that, I like that. Yeah. I, I think and if they don't, then we would just keep that May 16th and go from there. Sounds like a good plan to me. Can just we, just out of curious. I'll go ahead, David. Oh, I just wanted to check with Jessica on that, just to make sure that that is okay for, for her technicalities with voting. As far as moving the date again after right. May 16th? I mean, as long as we know, when do you anticipate the schools knowing that they're not going to reopen? We don't know that. Dr. McKenzie might have some. Yeah, I'm, I'm here if it's helpful. So, I'm sorry, just one second. Mom, can you turn that down? Uh, sorry about that, guys. Uh, so, we don't have any indication right now from the governor that there's anything different than that date of May 4th, of reopening on May 4th. I believe that the governor, like most governors, is using the data from IHME, and um, so that that data would would indicate that the peak is April 16th, and that there's been a steady drop, although there's a lot of rain still in early May. Um, but again, it's up to the governor, and we haven't heard anything except that um, non-essential services and schools are closed until May 4th. Jessica. Um, What's the latest date we could push back an election that's scheduled for May 16th at this point? I'm sorry, you broke up there. Can you repeat that? What's the latest date that we could push back the election if we just leave it scheduled for May 16th? When would we have to make a decision to push it back further or go forward with it? I mean, if we say that we want the election May 16th, everything is fine unless we find out the school's going to reopen. And then we'd want to push it back even more, which the state is still trying to do within before... June 30th, a minimum of 20 days notice prior to the election. So if you find out on May 4th, the kids are, go they are going back to school and you guys don't want to have the election at the school, because the threat's no longer there, um, you still have time to change it to June. Okay. And I would say the governor would no doubt, he wouldn't, we typically get about a week advance notice or more, just like the other, if there's extensions of other um, closures, I, it wouldn't happen the Friday before that weekend. There'd be some advance indication that it was going to be extended. We just haven't received that as of this moment. I mean, we don't want to wait 20 or say 25 days prior to May 16th to do the vote, and you can do that as well. It would just be postponed to an unknown date. Is it, is it possible to uh, send yeah. everybody an absentee ballot, or is this not possible to do that? So people absentee have ballot require a signature. You have to have a signature to requesting an absentee yes. ballot. And, and early voting as well. Can I ask if you're not speaking, please mute yourself. And if you have a TV running in the background, we can hear that you're listening to 22 News right now. <laughs> <laughs> so why don't uh if we're scheduled for the 16th why don't we reassess this on april 22nd i don't know if we have a meeting scheduled for that date but that would give us the 20 days in advance of the election and allow us if we haven't heard if if we think school's going to start back up we could push it again if we needed to or if school's done for the year then we can just leave it on may 16th Okay, I just feel more comfortable ordering the ballots as soon as possible because I don't know what the backlog is for shipping and all of that. So that's why I suggested at least the extra week just to cover any. We have a meeting on April 15th. Maybe that's our next meeting. We can just look at it then. That would be the 30 days? That would be, yeah, that would be 30 days, I guess, right? But that's also when we have a meeting, so we could we might know more by then. <laughs> Who knows? All right, if you're going to take a vote, then I ask for a friendly amendment to set the polling hours from noon to 8 p.m. Okay, so does anybody want to make a motion to move the date to May 16th? 
from noon to eight, and then we can reevaluate on April 15th if we want to hold that date, I guess. I, I think we already um, had a motion that was seconded. Was there a motion? Yes. I yes. just asked for a friendly amendment so that uh, we could set the polling hours as well. I amend my second. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Um, Aye. All right. The next topic, town meeting uh, date. So we can move this. Did the legislation pass yet, David, uh, to move it beyond June 30th? No, you can take you can you can take action on your own because we've not posted the warrant. So you can postpone this town meeting as late as. Uh, Are you there, or is John? I'm here. Is going to be his feedback there. Yeah, so you you have the authority right now to postpone uh, this town meeting as late as June 30th. That just takes a select board vote. I'll make a motion that we postpone town meeting to a date to be determined. Second. Any further discussion on that? I want to ask uh, Randy for what he's thinking. No, nothing. <laughs> Are you there? I think so. I'm not sure. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Yes. I can hear okay. You, I don't. You. It, it it doesn't matter what date it is to me. I'm not going anywhere. Obviously, so no vacations planned. So whatever works, we'll make it work. Thank you, Randy. Yep. Thank you. All right. Uh, any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Um, so from human resources, uh, we have a, uh, I don't know if Ed would like to speak on these, ADA policy, hiring and onboarding policy, and a new dental plan for town employees. Yes, that's correct. Um, the hiring policy, um, you know, obviously would only be for departments under the select board, um, but I would like to approach other, um, you know, departments or boards, um, you know, to adopt that policy. It's just uh, to ensure equitable hiring in the same process um, across the board for the town. So ensuring, um, you know, HR has good visibility about the posts that are being advertised, um, if possible, and ensuring they're being advertised uh, to the right location, you know, say, for example, you know, police and fire would have a different process, but Let's say they needed, uh, you know, female officers or a, um, you know, female ward in case they had, uh, um, you know, somebody being detained or something like that that a male officer couldn't supervise. Um, also, you know, it would allow us to um, uh, put our efforts into things like, uh, you know, veteran job fairs or other, you know, protected categories, um, trying to maybe perhaps recruit some folks with disabilities and ensure, you know, the town is you know, all around equitable in their hiring practices. It's something that's fairly standard across the board. Um, in terms of the ADA, there's currently no process for um, obtaining a reasonable accommodation. This policy would apply to anybody seeking employment or employed with the town, you know, elected, appointed, um, doesn't really matter, but, uh, you know, it just kind of outlines, um, you know, the way to go about getting that accommodation. I took it from Easter Seals um, right off their <laughs> website. So it's, uh, you know, about the best reasonable accommodation policy you could come across. Um, you know, currently at this point, we don't have anybody uh, looking to use that, but uh, at least that process is there in case someone needs it. And then last, the dental policy, uh, I think is a big win for us. Uh, normally we use Guardian Dental through the trust. Uh, dental is optional. We're not required to use dental through the trust like we are uh, for our health insurance. So I shopped around and Guardian, uh, excuse me, um, Altus came back with the best plan. They have the biggest network. Currently, they're about 8% below the cost of 
uh, Guardian's dental program if we were to go with the same benefit. Um, right now, the cost is about the same for a richer benefit. So the low plan would be $1,500 and the high plan would be $2,000, where with Guardian, they're 1000 across the board. Um, there are, I did uh, put a feeler out there to the workforce, both in schools and, um, you know, the town side of things. Uh, I only had about 10% or so say that their dentist wasn't in the network. Um, it does have an out of network benefit. And then we could also approach Altus about bringing those dentists into the network. So, you know, it, it, it's, there are some folks that, that might have some uh, logistics around it. Uh, maybe they have to find a new dentist or something like that, but overall it is a much better benefit for the town and school employees. Um, they're guaranteeing no more than a 9% increase the following year for rates. Um, which even if they did increase 9%, um, the price wouldn't really change too, too much and you're still getting a, a much better benefit. And that will be based on utilization. Um, but it, it is possible for the premiums to stay the same. It's possible for them to go up 1% or even 9%. But, um, you know, I think, it's a, I think it would be a big win for our town employees uh, some of the folks that did come to the office that, that wanted more detail in terms of what the plan is offering uh, were very, very satisfied. Um, and uh, I had a, two or three individuals say that they get a dental plan through um, a spouse's company, but they would switch to this plan because it's, it's better. Uh, there's no cost on part of the town. Um, the employees take on the full cost of that dental premium. Okay, thank you. And just so, the policies, what's our process for reviewing those and kind of looking at those and that kind of thing? Is anybody else looking uh, at them? I, I sent them out. I didn't really get much of a response. So everybody was invited to the table to have some input. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I did send everything uh, to some to the select board members. I think it was last week. Um, I haven't heard back. But if you'd like to sit on it for a little while, you're more than welcome to I think we usually have it presented at one meeting and then we don't vote on it until the second meeting. Yeah, that could be fine. I just, I, I'm okay with the ADA policy. I, that's pretty standard and reasonable accommodations, um, you know, within our limits within town hall, obviously we don't have a, an elevator. All we have is that lift, but reasonable accommodations make sense. Um, I do have some problems with the draft onboarding hiring process uh, memo. Um, you know, the, the fact that we're going to recruit based on demographics, I just, I feel it should be best qualified. And for a, a town as small as we are and a, uh, a workforce as small as we are, I think that's only going to uh, complicate the hiring process. I think it should be strictly based off of qualifications rather than uh, and I say this as a veteran, even veterans preference or anything else as far as the hiring process goes. Do we have to, can you, can you hear me? Uh, you might be muted. Yeah, we can hear you, Joyce. Sorry about that. That language is in there. If you read the whole policy, it says the hiring process won't be stopped if, um, you know, like for example, you know, and it says that for the benchmark, you know, the demographics of the town would, would sort of be the goal for, you know, the workforce. Uh, but it's not something we have to engage in. It's only it's only a recommendation. Um, but it is in there that it says the process won't stop because, say, you know, a veteran didn't apply or something like that. Um, you know, there's no uh, firm affirmative action policy in there. It's simply just about goals and, and equitable hiring process across the board. And that's one of the reasons I wanted to sit on it a little bit. Um, I think maybe the language could just be tweaked. Sure. Um, it, you know, I, I agree that generally we should have a policy that encourages people to take to take all factors into account in the hiring process. You know, we want to have a diverse workforce to the extent we can. But I certainly agree with David that ultimately we want the most qualified candidates. Um, so maybe it's just a matter of, of playing with that language a little bit, Ed? Sure. And even if it's not, um, you know, 
like a, a reasonable goal at the moment, you know, because of the size of the town and, and the current demographics of the town, I would at least like to have some type of, um, you know, uniform method of advertising jobs and onboarding, making sure folks are given an orientation, they get their normal, you know, sexual harassment, and here's how our town government's set up, here's where you fit into the town government, um, that, 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 that sort of um, orientation, I think, is very beneficial for a lot of employees. So. Yeah, and I think that's much needed. Okay, any other comments for Ed right now? I think, or does anybody want to not take a vote tonight at, or want to take a vote tonight and uh, not wait until next meeting to vote on this one? I think the dental one we can certainly vote on a bunch, but I think the dental one we can certainly vote on tonight. We don't have to negotiate with the union members. This is something that's being offered, and if they choose to uh, join into it, that would be their own. It's not mandated in their contract, or we're not held to their contracts for this. So I would suggest that you know we do offer them this before the start of the next fiscal year. When's our open enrollment? Um, May. Okay. So for dental, time is definitely of the essence, um, you know, um, but uh, the policies, we can certainly hold off on those. There's no rush. So that's why you're saying I make a motion for the dental move forward. Um, I'll second. And and uh, any further discussion? I was just going to ask, actually, if uh, that was kind of sent out to bid and then brought back. Is that how that's done? Uh, yes. I went to um, two other companies and then, of course, Guardian. Um, okay. So I, you know, we have quotes from, from three different companies. and uh, Okay. And that was good. Yeah. And they were hands down the best offer that we received. And just the other thing too is just was staff asked like if this plan would work at their dentist, uh, you know, sometimes is that they have providers all over this area. just want to make sure. Yeah. So that was, you know, I, when I sent this out to everyone, I included the link to Altus's um, look up a dentist feature and um, you know, I would say 80 to 90% they're in the network. There's a, there are a handful of folks whose dentist is not in the network, but Altus has an out of network benefit. Um, and then Altus will also work to bring their dentist into the network. Um, a couple of folks did say that because it's a much better benefit, they're willing to change dentists. Um, one person did say they were not willing to change their dentists. Um, and the other one said, depending on how the auto net network benefit works, they might change, they might not. But um, overall, you know, when you look big picture it uh, for the town employees, this is a much better benefit. Okay. Okay. Any other colleagues in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Can you hear me now? <laughs> I can hear you, John. I can hear you, John. Okay. Before we move on, Christian, I also emailed the um, proposed update for the employee guidebook. So if everybody just has some time, please try to take it's it's thick. It's you know fifty some odd pages or something. But um, okay, okay, a little light reading. Yes. <laughs> okay. Um, thank you, Ed. Thanks for presenting that. And now, uh, MVP grant update. Uh, David, do you have uh, this this update? Yeah. So this is informational at this point. We've gone through the planning process for the, uh, the municipal vulnerability preparedness grant. Uh, from that planning process, we identified three uh, priorities for the town. One is to work uh, on the dike, continue working on the dike as a critical piece of infrastructure that protects the town from floods and other uh, high water events. Um, and the ditch cleaning and the use of the riverbank uh, um, for recreational purposes 
that uh, results in erosion and degrading of the uh, of the environment and does increases the likelihood of some sort of hazard affecting people inland. Uh, Chris Okafor and I identified the ditch cleaning as the next best um, effort on this uh, grant process. Are eligible to apply in May for a grant to um, to uh, actually accomplish some of the work that we identified in the planning process. Uh, we required to make a 25% in-kind match. Uh, so quick uh, uh, calculation of in-kind labor, we can come up with $90,000 of in-kind match, which means that we can apply for a 270,000 cash match grant. Uh, for the next phase of this whole project. Uh, we think this is something that's uh, worth doing and will obviously keep you in the loop as we get closer to the grant deadline. Could we use, so we, so would the grant just be for the ditch cleaning or would, could that be, or drainage cleaning or could that be used for the next phase of the dike study? Well, what we saw was with the uh, the culverts and uh, the condition of the culverts all throughout the town, the critical need to clean the ditches is that we should do uh, more culvert assessment under this grant, as well as the shovel on the ground uh, work with uh, drainage throughout town. Uh, in terms of the dike, um, I'm thinking that uh, we, we're not ready at this point for a shovel in the earth uh, uh, project with the dike and for this amount of money $270,000 there's not much work that we would be able to accomplish on the dike when compared to the work that we can be doing with the drainage system so I think this is more bang for the buck I think that we're in a better position with respect to the drainage system and the culverts um, than we are with the dike. I think we should continue working on the dike analysis, but um, we're not ready for any real practical, large scale upgrade to the dike. Okay, thank you. And do, do we need to vote on anything here, David, or is this just mention of you guys are applying for the grant? I think I'm running it up the flag and seeing who will salute. That's all I need right now. I mean, it seems like a good uh, opportunity for us, so I don't see any reason why not to do it. <laughs> any other comments? Good. Okay. And that's everything on the MVP? Yep. Okay, we'll move on to marijuana establishments. Uh, we are going to discuss the marijuana RFQs and two responses that were submitted. This is something that we uh, looked at, it feels like a lifetime ago now, so I don't know how we're all uh, thinking in this new climate. If we have questions for these two potential establishments or we would like to uh, discuss what our path forward might be. So uh, I'll kind of open it up to the rest of the board to see where you guys are at right now. My, my thoughts are they're not going to be opening any too soon. Uh, <laughs> not until some of this uh, restrictions are lifted. Uh, did receive reports from uh, Chief Mason, on the establishments and the security. Uh, not a plan was in place for uh, the one for Route 9, but he did uh, feel that he knew the laws and everything, but uh, also said that the one in Hampshire Mall uh, met all the criteria and was very well put together for security. Um, that being said, I guess we would have to wait to see when anything else opens up, so I'm not sure how soon we want to actually uh, advance on this at this point. I have mixed feelings on it. Part of me wants to 
wait because we have so much going on right now to try to do this as well as just taking on a lot and yeah don't, don't have one marijuana establishment yet in town we only have one more license to give away and the other side of me sees this as um a possible revenue stream for the town when everything gets back up and running and you know i think we're going to need as much revenue as we can get as everything starts coming back online so um I hate and to the, miss that opportunity, but I don't right. know. And, and they shut the other ones down in Northampton and whatnot, so they're not even open for business at this point. Yeah, they're not deemed essential right now. Correct. Uh, people would argue with that for sure. <laughs> yeah. So I guess my question, though, is what what more information are we going to get if we do hold off on making a decision, what's the additional information that we're looking for? I mean, I know that they're not going to be able to be up and running, but on the other hand, I think we should do everything we can to help businesses stay on track so that when all of this cloud is lifted, they're ready to go. I think the one, the one, be, the, I think the two things between the two businesses, and I have no druthers between either two because you certainly know how I feel. Uh, one seems a little bit more uh, plans in place where the Rue 9 business uh, has not actually presented any come forth of what actually the establishment will look like. Um, even though they do know what the security needs to be, uh, it's not visual for us. Right, but I'm saying if we... Um so, well, so you're saying then by waiting, then we would give them the opportunity to go through and have more information from them? Well, I think they probably are holding back to know whether or not that they should try to proceed with a business on Route 9 that uh, is in question, uh, whether or not that they're going to proceed with doing any architectural changes or anything to that business because um, time consuming and business wise and uh, who are we going to issue the license to? So does it behoove us to issue the license to either one so that they actually know which direction to go in? Well, if, if we issued, if we voted on one of these proposals, we could start engaging in the uh, host community agreement negotiations and they could start getting their ducks in a row in the meantime while everything's shut down. Um, so I think if we're going to go with one of these, I think we should do it sooner rather than later. Um, but I, I've got some concerns with both of them. So I'm not really that happy with either at this point. Can you share those, David? Well, okay. So the one in the mall, um, in, in my opinion, if it was an exterior entrance only, I'd be okay with it. Um, I'm not okay with having an interior entrance to the mall. Um, I know that, seems kind of like a petty issue to some people and I've heard from um, both sides on that argument, but um, you know, if they could restrict it to just an outside entrance for uh, customers, um, I'd be better off. I'd feel better, better with that. Um, the issue I have with the other one is it's pretty close to um, uh, the heirloom collective. You know, they're, they're only other competitor in town and do we really want to have an entire section of town where that's, you know, that that's, what that section of town is known for. There's not a whole lot else going on down there other than staples and, and hotels, you know? You don't want the concentration there. Yeah, I don't know if that's what we want to have just in that area as far as a concentration. And I, I also feel a little bit um, uh, kind of like we're being unfair to uh, the Heirloom Collective who kind of was the pioneers in this and negotiated and got, got in front of things last time around. Uh, that, that we're sticking a, a direct competitor right next to them. So yeah. that, that's all. Yeah. And I think that's for me too. It's not really like I have more questions. It's more along the lines of, you know, where David is going a little bit is just, do we wait six months for something like this and say, you know, uh, let's look, let's reevaluate it at this point. I mean, I think there are pluses and minuses of both the pro proposals. I think they're both really, solid proposals it's just a matter of as a town we want to take this on right now or wait a little bit 
I agree with David to the sense, um, but the plan for the one in the mall is very secure. Um, I like how they have, you know, uh, buzz in, buzz out, everybody carded, um, so on and so forth. And then they also, but I would be like David, more comfortable with an outside entrance and not inside the mall where, you know, I mean, I, today I don't trust people. I, I, that's how I go today. So you can go in, buy some, come out and sell it. So, you know, <laughs> that's me. Um, so I, I prefer that you would have an outside one, not that they couldn't do that outside, but I would prefer an outside entrance. Here, I just want to ask John if he want, has anything, Molly, if you have anything, and then I just want to at least give everyone that's here <coughs> representing both organizations a chance to speak too. So, John, do you have anything? Yeah, I, I'm more just for a standalone place. Uh, with all the work the mall's done over the years with no smoking and for the kids and stuff like that, it's a more fa family-oriented mall uh, in one place if I were to take a vote right now. Molly, did you have something? Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm okay with both proposals. Um, I think that the presentations were good. I don't have a strong feeling about one of the... Um, you know, one of the business owners over the other. Uh, as far as the mall goes, I'm actually a little bit more inclined towards the mall from the standpoint that I would think that they could get up and running a little bit more quickly with less, um, you know, the, the whole planning board process and everything that has to be gone through could take a while. Um, I agree that I think the exterior entrance would be preferable. Um, I'm not adamantly opposed to something on the interior, but, you know, I, I like the fact that they indicated that, you know, it wouldn't be obvious that it was um, a retail marijuana establishment when you walked by. But I can just see that being a little bit more problematic for people with families who didn't necessarily want kids going by that. Um, although I would also say people go to pins and they have a full bar there. So you kind of can't argue both. It's pretty obvious they're serving alcohol at pins. Um, and I think we need to treat this the same way, regardless of our personal feelings about it. Um, it is the law. So <clears throat> that's kind of where I'm at right now. I'm a little bit tipped closer to the mall establishment. And I also agree with the point that David and Joyce made about proximity to the others. I don't know that a concentration is a great um, idea. Yeah. I like the mall too, just from a traffic perspective. There's a lot of parking there. There's already infrastructure for red lights going in and out. All that kind of stuff is already there. It's not like um, we have to worry about more turning in and on and off Route 9 and that kind of thing. So I do like that. Can okay hear, uh, from them as far as yeah. whether you're interested in doing an exterior entrance only? I know we've got I yeah. Think let's let's open it up. Why don't we open it up to the folks um, from Hadleaf first, and uh, and then and then we'll take comments from uh, uh, Mint. So Jennifer, would you mind unmuting? I unmuted them. Lynn Gray, would you like to be unmuted as well? Hi. 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 Hi, I'm yeah. here. Lynn and Andrew are both here. I don't know if anybody else is there from uh, yep. Matt as well. Okay, Matt. Yeah. Do you, what, do you guys have anything, any comments, anything you'd like to say? If Andrew and Matt are okay, the first thing I'd like to address is the exterior entrance versus the interior entrance. Our preference um, and our selection of this particular location at the property was very meticulous. Um, we discussed it at length um, at the owner's level that it would behoove us to have the interior entrance um, the way that we've laid it out. We are open, obviously, um, as we expressed during our last meeting to having an exterior also, but being an enclosed shopping center um, one of the benefits that we have is offering our shoppers a climate controlled experience. 
um, and allowing shoppers to be able to um, frequent, you know, all of our establishments. So it would be our preference to have an interior access point. And I think that Andrew and Matt have already come up with a really great plan to control um, the ins and outs and the security and also um, have been very um, diligent in, in pursuing a layout that is a little bit more muted um, and not um, obvious about what their operation truly is um, for families that may be frequenting this center. So, I, I mean, I'm, I'm open to both options. Um, I would lean toward the interior entrance portion because, you know, we're an enclosed shopping center and if we start, you know, going this route of, of only allowing exterior access, it, it kind of diminishes the value of being an enclosed shopping center, which we have been, and we've prided ourselves on for customer control and access and comfort levels um, for all of the seasons. Um, I, I just think that it's a, it, it would be a great benefit to everybody to have it at, at the center and the, the location that we picked was specifically off the center court for all of the reasons that people have been concerned about as far as families congregating in those areas. So um, I'll let Andy and um, Matt speak more to that, but that's the mall's perspective as a landlord. Well, one of the things that we were looking for, we wanted to make sure that that location was very, very close to uh, an exit and entry point. Has everybody gotten a chance to look at the layout of the mall and the hallway and where the, where the actual store is located? We wanted to make sure that uh, you know, people do just come in easily and leave easily. And we even, I've even spoken to them about the possibility of um, having security, make sure there's no loitering going around, make sure there's nobody, nobody hanging around. So we're gonna have a security guard as well. If there's still those little kids playing around, people loitering, we can, we spoke to Lynn about it, and the mall's really open to having us just keep moving along. Um, we're, all, we're open to an exterior location, but we rather an exterior entrance, but I, I agree with Lynn, we'd prefer to have it inside, but if it's a big, big issue, we're open to discussion on the whole thing. Um, as, as I think one of you stated, the location is, in many ways is perfect. It's, uh, it's off of Route 9 with plenty of parking and easy access. As far as the other location where the Midas building is, I agree it is too close to the, other, to, to the original location that already got their license. Um, I don't know if any of you have ever gone to these locations for whatever reason but I've gone to them to just to check them out and they get an immense amount of traffic. A lot of times the authorities have to basically direct traffic. So those two locations being that close into being that close to each other, I can totally see that um, it would create tra traffic jams and a lot of directing of traffic needed just to accommodate both of them. Location, there's so much parking and where the store is located, as soon as you pull in, you walk right in, and you walk around the corner, and the store is right there, and you walk right out. Traffic would never be an issue. Um, I think somebody mentioned that the build-out would be a lot easier as well. It would be able to get up and running a lot quicker as well. Um, all, all the infrastructure is already there. The parking's there. The space is there. It's just a matter of outfitting it with the security and whatever items we need to get to get rolling. Um, I actually feel that the place would be more secure with an entrance on the inside rather than rather than entrance on the outside. But is that the only concern that you guys have as far as uh, the exit and entry being on, on the inside? I was just gonna ask if the <laughs> concern is people like loitering with product and you know is the concern from other people just with people going buying something at the dispensary and then wandering around the mall with it and possibly using it in the mall or is it 
No, um, that, that, yeah, that's I, I'm just asking the other select board members what their concerns are. Could I, could I answer that? Sure. <laughs> Imagine walking into a liquor store and popping open your, I mean, let's say there was a liquor store within the mall. You buy a beer or a bottle, you pop it open, you walk through the mall. That's not going to happen. Your public drinking is not allowed. Public smoking is not allowed. I know people have had concerns about uh, the odor of the marijuana. We're going to have a state-of-the-art filtration system. There will be no odor. You won't be able to smell anything from the product. But as, as soon as somebody started smoking it, since when is smoking on the outside legal? Are you guys having planning on having edibles there? Because that is something you could theoretically just have and wander around the mall. Um, if it's a concern, we can we can address that. Yeah. But li like I said, we're going to have plenty of security on hand. Um, the mall security will be working with us on this. We will keep traffic moving. We don't want people loitering around. I notice right now there's a little bench outside of the location. I even asked Lynn if she could have that bench moved and really open to accommodating any needs that you guys, you guys might have. So the issue I have is there is no way to prevent somebody from loitering inside the mall because that's what kids do. The kids go to the mall to hang out, to wander around, to, you know, just spend time. Um, and that's what the mall is trying to build with a kind of an entertainment center with go-karts and the movies and everything else that's going on there. Side entrance, if somebody does want to hang out, it's going to be somebody that's hanging out outside the store because it's one of your potential customers or, or want to be customers uh, versus, you know, 14 year old kids that are hanging out uh, and are just intrigued by it or, or want to do something that they're not supposed to, to be doing. So that's why I think an, an outside entrance kind of eliminates the chance, um, you know, kids that are hanging out inside the mall at the movies are not going to intentionally go outside the mall in the middle of the winter and freeze and hang out outside your exterior door. Of course, it's where they will hang out inside the mall. I, I would, I would, yeah, I was just going to say, I would like to address that. Yeah, I would like to address that. In terms of anybody that frequents pins or Arizona pizza for that matter, if they are exhibiting any dis, you know, behaviors that are not compliant with our code of conduct or our behavior code that is posted at all of our entrances and our 24 hour security are um, monitoring at all times, um, at all hours, not just you know, during the day, uh, but in the evening hours as well. If anybody's exhibiting any behavior that's beyond the behavior code, they're asked to leave. If they're not compliant with that, we enlist the support of our emergency services. We do not condone or promote um, behavior that is not, you know, to use the facility for the purpose that it exists. If you're there to do business, if you're there to shop the establishments, if you're there to enjoy the services or the entertainment components, we condone that and we support that. If you're there to loiter, if you're there to simply observe or any other behavior that's outside of what our, our establishment is, is in place for, you're asked to leave. So I would support Andy in that if anybody is, you know, hanging out for the purposes of just observing or, you know, hanging out for whatever reason, that that's not something we support at all. And that's something our security team is in place for to ask you to move along or to, you know, visit another establishment or we, you know, enlist the support of our emergency services. I would, I would say, especially with a location like that, I think we would be even more strict or the mall security would be even more strict. We could also, um, and again, I know we haven't talked to, um, we still have to talk to Mint too, but if we were to go down this path, it's also something that could be done on a trial basis. And if there were any issues, we're holding the license. I mean, we could pull the license or we could make it conditional in some way. I understand. Is, are there any other issues other than uh, the loitering? Any other concerns? I don't have any other concerns. Uh, anybody else? Any other? 
I think I'm here now. Hello? <laughs> <laughs> Finally, Hi, after an hour, I shut the whole computer down and started again. All right. I've been listening on the phone anyway, but no, I, I have nothing else. I think that outdoor entrance would be a big decision maker for me. I'm still for the standalone place just for safety reasons, I think, but that's that's where I'm coming from. <clears throat> We're, we're open to talk about it. Uh, this was something that Lynn and I had never discussed. Um, we, like I said, we feel that it will be far more secure. We could do it on a trial basis, and, and if that didn't work out, then how about, how about Lynn, how about if we tried it on a trial basis, and if that didn't work out for whatever reason, then an out, outdoor entrance was uh, we can possibly reconsider at that time. Would that make everybody feel better? Well, I, I think we still have to hear from Mint, but um, I, I would not be in favor of a trial basis license. I, I think uh, we either need to decide whether we want an exterior entrance or an interior entrance, and then whatever we decide on, uh, you know, we can we can pull a license if need be if things don't work out. But using the term you know trial basis, I don't think is 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 a good thing when we're talking about this. Uh, we need to make a decision of, of which we would prefer and go that direction. Well, I, I agree. I don't mean trial basis as far as a license. I mean, if there was ever some sort of problem where the interior entrance didn't work, then we could revisit that. Yeah, and David, I only said that from the standpoint that, you know, I, I don't know enough to know that it would be a problem. I mean, I'm listening to what Lynn is saying. It, it makes sense to me. Um, why they want the interior. Um, it also makes sense to me why you feel more strongly about the exterior. So my only point was that um, if this is a design that they came up with, if we wanted to give them the license, then we could say that there needed to be a strict evaluation period after, I don't know, one month or something. Um, and if we felt that there were issues, then we could then force them to go to the exterior. So that that's all I was saying. And, and I'm okay starting there too. Yeah, and let's think too, I mean, you're at the mall, even if there is an exterior entrance to that establishment, you could still walk around the corner and go in the mall. So I mean, it's, you know, I don't know. I, I feel like that's kind of a tough point to get around because you're still at the mall and can gain access to the mall from the dispensary. So um, that's just the way it goes. But um, I don't know, I feel like we've hit a lot of the points here. So maybe we can just move on and hear from Mint and see what they say and then come back to the, the board and try to come to some conclusion. So let's hear from Mint. Jennifer, do you mind uh, I'm, I'm, I'm hopping over to them? Hello. I'm, Hello. I'm, I don't know if you can hear me or not. Yep, we can hear you. All right, perfect. How's everyone doing? I hope is everybody staying safe around these uh, these times here, and uh, thank you for considering us. Yeah. Um, so to address a couple of concerns, um, I guess from a security standpoint, um, we will make sure that the security meets all the standards. Um, the CCC has their own requirements as well that we have to meet and actually achieve and go beyond. Um, from the security access controls, so security cameras and everything else um, in the other city that we're in and other states that we're in. Uh, these are approved um, SOPs and standards um, and they, we will run these across with the chief of police and make sure they are approved and we will work within those guidelines. Um, from a perspective of trying to make a decision today or tomorrow, the reality is going through the CCC um, is probably going to take eight months to a year. Um, so nothing's going to happen today or tomorrow, even if they allow the recreational dispensaries to open back up within the next month. Um, so this is still going to be a lengthy process. Uh, the sooner that we can realize um, which candidate gets approved, the sooner we can start construction and work in parallel with the CCC, uh, which we are doing today at one of our other sites. Um, from a security standpoint, um, the one thing, and God forbid, if there is ever a security 
issue when it comes to a robbery, armed robbery, a standalone isolated situation as opposed to something that's at the mall and you have a risk of hundreds if not thousands of people that could be at risk. Um, just one thing to consider there. Um, the other issue would be the CCC has strict guidelines when it comes to advertising um, to minors. Um, and the idea that this is at a mall that attracts minors, um, the CCC is gonna have a very tough time with that. So that's another thing to consider there. Um, I'm kind of going through my notes. Oh, there was also a mention of being uh, too close to the other establishment. Um, if I'm not mistaken, the mall is only a block or two away from our proposed location. So we're, we're not too far away from whether it's clustering on our site or their site. It's proposed to be almost the same distance. Um, from a traffic study, we have no problem presenting a traffic study, you know, the requirement document. Um, we can also propose something where it's going to be an appointment only. Um, but we do have a adequate amount of parking on that site and we don't feel that that's going to be an issue. And with our experience and um, studies in other markets, we have the experience and operational skills to be able to um, get out the amount of volume within a, a proper period of time. Um, and I don't know if the team has any other questions or if they want to add anything to what I said or um, if staff has any other questions for us. I don't have anything else right now. I think you answered my questions. Yeah. Does anybody else have any other questions? Um, I and, I just, any, oh, go ahead, Molly. Sorry. <laughs> I just have a question about the, the traffic. Um, and I know you're saying you, you would do a study and everything. Um, I mean, I'm just trying to uh, picture that location. So are you imagining that there's going to need to be a fair amount more of a, a footprint around that building in terms of like pavement or anything or curb no. cuts? Or no, the, the, the footprint of the buildings remain the same um, because the garage doors are no longer going to be there it's going to add for more parking spaces for us. So we're going to restructure the parking to make sure it accommodates the, uh, the square footage. That's not me speaking. All right. oh. Sorry, nothing. Oh, okay. All right. Well, thank you very much um, for coming. <laughs> And what what do where do you guys where are you at with the the board here? What do you guys think? <laughs> We're dead. I don't know. Um. <laughs> <laughs> it's a hard. It's a hard. This is a hard decision. Uh, you know, um, and especially in a time like this, I feel like it, we have so much other thing, so many other things in our minds. It's a tough one to make it's a little bit business as yeah, i think we got some seriously more important things to worry about right now than which one of these are going to open up in a year from now yeah but we also have to keep the pipeline moving right yeah oh yeah so i'm, I'm all in favor of pipeline like let's just keep this stuff going i don't think that this is a huge um you know like they said it's going to take a while so it's not like there's suddenly a huge amount of work that got dumped on our well, lap no and it's and the other establishment hasn't even gotten all their clearances yet either. That's, but that's, it's a process, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't happen overnight. So my inclination would be to, uh, at this point, just based on what I've, I've heard, uh, in my personal opinion would be to reject mint and continue negotiating with Hadleaf for the mall location. I really <laughs> want the exterior only um, entrance. If we could work something that I, I know, maybe I'm not making the point on why well enough, but I, I do think that's important to make it harder for you know families and kids that are hanging out inside the mall. And the idea that people don't hang out inside the mall, I think, is not realistic. I, I don't care <laughs> who says that. Uh, people hang out in the mall regardless of whether they're shopping. So um, 
that that would be my inclination at this point. I don't know if we want to make that make a vote or if we just want to wait. I, I don't know what's the rest of the board think. I, I, first, oh, I was just going to say real quick, sorry, and then you can go Joyce's. Yeah, I kind of am leaning more toward the mall location personally, if I had to vote and I'm fighting between the mall location and delaying for six months until we kind of, uh, you know, the dust has settled and we're able to kind of think clearly. But if I had to vote tonight, that would be the way I personally want to go right now. I think I'm going to edge toward that way. I'm, I'm not in favor of any of this stuff. So, I mean, it's, it's a big step for me to even contemplate this, but if we're going to have to, it's a matter of time and it takes a long process. Um, I like the security uh, and I do think we should look at and when we negotiate with them to see about an outside entrance um, is what I am looking at right now, but I would, tend to uh, hedge towards the uh, mall one. That's where I'm at as well. Any motion on the table then? So uh, I guess do we want to, or David Nixon, are you still there? Still here. Wake up, David. Yay. Uh, he was taking a nap. Oh, I'm following every word. <laughs> so are we able to reject one proposal without selecting the other proposal at this point and continue kind of ironing out some finer details before we say yes? Or do we need to just hold off on making a decision on either before, uh, you know, so we can do one and do both of that at the same time? You know, if I iron out some details and make a selection, or or how should we work this? You always have the right to reject any or all uh, of uh, the responses that uh, you've received. So, yes, you can reject one and then negotiate with the other. Hello. Right, I'm gonna make I'm gonna make a motion then that we um, ex. Uh, grant the license to Hadleaf subject to favorable negotiations with the select board relative to the entrance. And community host agreement. And community host agreement, David, thank you. I'll second that. Okay, is there any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Well, congratulations, and thank you all for looking at our town and applying here and uh, looking to open a new new business here when things get back to normal. So thank you. Thank you for the opportunity. Yep, thank you. All right, we are going to hear on the North Hadley Sugar Shack on-premise wine and malt license public hearing we have for 7 p.m., uh, the North Hadley Sugar Shack has applied for this new style of license. They already hold a off-premise wine and malt license, but would like to serve there as well. Jennifer, am I getting all that correct? Excuse me. Absolutely. That is correct. Um, they have submitted their application. They notified all of their butters. Um, I've been working with boys roots. I'm sorry if I pronounced it wrong. And uh, Kevin uh, for I think probably six months now. Um, and they've been really cooperative and helpful to work with. Um, I think that they're a good candidate candidate for this kind of license as our first try in the town of Hadley. Um, also, uh, Chief Spanknable and Chief Mason have both been contacted about this and neither of them have a problem with them having the dual license. And I know that Joe and Kevin are there. That is correct. Yep. Yes. yep, we're here. And so if they, if you have any questions for them, they're there to answer. When are you starting delivery? <laughs> <laughs> oh, actually, I can answer that. The legislation is actually going through the house right now. Yeah. I'll make a motion to accept this proposal with great gratefulness. Thank you so much for doing this. Yeah, I'll second, yeah, that I'll second it. 
we've got a lot of seconds. So would you guys be serving food or would you be like, would you open up your restaurant more full time or is this like a bar you're thinking of opening? What are you thinking the concept is? So we're thinking the concept is going to be more of a seasonal after, after the maple sugaring season um, to do like a little bit of a farm fresh dinner, maybe Thursday, Friday, Saturday nights for limited hours, maybe something in the evening hours, like four to eight, maybe on Saturdays, a little bit longer. Um, definitely do not want that bar reputation. That's not where we're going with this. Um, Shelly has been contacted over the years. Um, there's been um, requests for after a funeral to do like a small reception. Could we offer beer and wine? Well, when it's spur of the moment like that, the answer is no, we cannot. Um, you know, there's been some, you know, meetings that people have wanted to have here, same type of request. So that is what intrigued us to say, you know, the world is changing. Things are, you know, happening differently. Maybe this is the next step for us to be, you know, proactive in staying a viable business here in North Hadley is to offer what, you know, the, the, the people in the community are asking us to do. So, um, again, I want to reiterate, we're not looking for any kind of late night hours with this. Um, and obviously, with everything going on in the world today, um, as you all know, this is definitely something we started prior to what is happening. And yes, we are here tonight and yes, we want to go forward, but we're also like everybody else. Um, we have our fingers crossed that everybody gets healthy again and that the economy rebounds. So um, I hope that answers what you're asking. I think it's always, I think it's always been our uh, process in the select board to certainly help all of our businesses in Hadley. And I think this would be a great revenue for you to do. You do great things through Christmas and through maple sugaring season. I'm so sorry your maple sugaring season has uh, interrupted because of this, because I sure enjoyed breakfast up there. Um, but I think that, you know, having another revenue for you to keep in business, I think is a great thing for us to do for you. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, thank you. That sounds like a great concept and probably opportunities for events and all kinds of other stuff too. So uh, I think it's great. And uh, since this is a hearing, I don't know if we have any abutters or anybody on the call we'd have to hear from just before we do vote. Jennifer, I don't know if you have any um, opening it up. If uh, 2390, do you have any comments? They might not have their mic on. Yeah, um, give them an opportunity. And okay, they're unmuted on our end. Okay, and everybody else on the call. Um, everybody else on the call. Um, I know that Stephanie is here for Chipotle, which is the next one. Okay, unless Dylan and Denise or Mike and Jessica have comments. Or Jane or Alan comments? Anybody? Okay. I just want to make sure we're uh, meeting all our criteria for opening it up and letting people comment. But okay. Five, eight, the 586 is the highway department. Oh, that oh, okay. must be Chris Oka for listening in then. Oh, okay. um, for the record, okay. not only did North Hadley Sugar Shack notify all of their abutters, we sent out a second notification since this was our first Zoom public hearing. And I sent out an additional uh, notice last week informing everybody of the opportunity to do this. And if they felt uncomfortable doing this, emailing me or calling me with their concerns. And I've heard from no abutters at all. Okay, sounds great. So all those in favor. Aye. Aye. Congratulations. <clears throat> Hey, thank Best you of luck. Hey, thank Joe, you. maybe we can have 
Joe, maybe we can have a selectman's meeting there uh, once you get it all organized. You know, a steak dinner and a beer, maybe. We look forward to it. <laughs> John, John, I did want to make a comment. You look like the most comfortable one. At the <laughs> my, my favorite chair. If I fall asleep, pardon me. You know. <laughs> so I would first like to thank everybody. Um, you know, for for granting us this wish, but um. Being a farmer and self-employed, I have one more request to ask of all of you while we're here tonight. Um, if there's any possible way that you would maybe think about prorating the 2020 fee for us, we don't know when and if we're gonna get up and running here. Um, I would just hate personally to see January 1st roll around and have another fee for what we're trying to do as you know, unfortunately, none of us, including you guys, know what the future is going to bring for all of us. Um, it's something I just want to get off my chest. Maybe it's something we can review in a couple months, depending on what happens with everything that's happening in the world. But I figured I would just, you know, get that off my chest and ask you right now. Yeah, I think that's a great suggestion. So, I mean, um, can we make this... I mean, we, we all want you to do it. So I think it's just a matter of when we make the date effective. If it's tonight, do you have to do anything else with the ABCC to, to execute this? Jennifer, I think you would be, you might have the answer to that, but we were just thinking that um, based on um, previous discussions, this might take another 90 days, 120 before the ABCC even it, um, approves this. So there we might be in July or August. So that's why we're thinking, you know, um, that that's that's the key to Joey's question. But as far as when we get this up and running, it is definitely a big question mark based on what's been happening right now. Um, yeah. Jennifer, I think we're we're in line with everything that we need needed to um, apply with the ABCC, if I'm not uh, mistaken. I, I I have no plan. I have no problem prorating uh, whenever we're able to get your business up and running. I think we should take a look at that at a, a future meeting, but I think we're all in agreement that uh, we have, we approve your business and I think we'd like to prorate it uh, for whenever that does happen. Okay, that's, that's fair. That's if we just prorate it for every, whatever day you open, you know, then the rest of the year or something like that. So yeah. if you open so on wave, December 30th, we prorate it for one day or- if So it's typically in the past, open, what you Sorry, John. The the, yeah. Give him permission to run his business when he opens, but just wave the fee till the first of the year. I typically what y'all do when you prorate is that we take the fee and divide it by 12 and then they pay however many remaining months there are. If you'd like to prorate their license, you could choose to do it for the April 1st date now, which is the night you're approving it or you can wait till the ABCC sends us the final approval and they come and pick up their license. Honestly, the ABCC is still open and running in a remote fashion. I don't believe they're doing inspections though. And I don't know that North Hadley Sugar Shack has the ability to show them everything they're gonna need to see when their restaurant itself is closed, I believe, right? Yeah, that is correct right now, it, yes. I know the store is open, and I know y'all are doing pickups and stuff there for residents, but um, they, the ABCC is going to be sort of limited on how far they can go in this whole process anyway. So my recommendation would be to maybe prorate it the day the ABCC approves it, if y'all are okay with that. So I think, yeah, that's what we kind of had in mind, because th this this downtime also gives us a chance to get everything in place and and be ready to go. Um, we have a lot of planning and, and everything else to do. So I think that that would be wonderful. Um, more than fair. Yes. Yeah, I agree with that 100%. I was just looking for instead of paying for a full year's fee, if we only get six months or four months, depending on when the dust settles, and we actually get up and running. Um, I'm, I am more than fine with that. What is fair is fair to the town of Hadley, we get it. And um, that's I think everybody might be thinking that way, like we are. If it's three months worth of or four months, that's absolutely fine. And and just to make one thing clear, it's not just this, solely this kind of 
um, Thursday through Saturday, we, we do have um, events that are, uh, whether it's a business meeting or uh, catered events, luncheons and, and little dinners that we constantly get asked for and we have to turn down because they want the beer and wine uh, as part of their catering menu. So those are the things we're hoping will take off even quicker than we can actually get up and running with a fixed menu for a special dinner night or something. Does that make sense, everybody? Yeah. Sounds good. Oh my I'll, make, I'll make a motion to that. Second. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Well, congratulations, and I hope you can get up running sooner rather than later. But Thank you. We'll see how it goes. Thanks, all. Thank you, everybody. Thanks for doing it. Yeah. Good luck. Thank you. Good night. Good night. All right, we can do the Chipotle change of manager and change of LLC. Hi, so Chipotle submitted their application um, a couple of weeks ago. Um, their uh, legal counsel is here, uh, right there. Hello. Hi. And um, I believe their um, change of manager of record, Stephanie, is also with us. Um, and I will let you take it away, okay? Okay, sounds good. Um, good evening. My name is Rashi Monglik with McDermott, Quilty & Miller, um, which we are representing the applicant, Chipotle Mexican Girl. I did see Stephanie on um, the call. Uh, she is a proposed manager of record, and tonight we're seeking your approval, approval for two different amendments. So there's a change of manager of record from Omar Messiah to Stephanie. Um, Stephanie has been with Chipotle for about five years, and so she has the experience and she's worked her way up from a general staff member up to a manager. And so she has the experience and the know-how to run an operation such as this. Um, she is a citizen and a resident of the Commonwealth as well. Um, and then the other change is a change of the LLC managers. So that is a change at the higher corporate level. Um, so that wouldn't affect any day-to-day -day operations of this location. So that's just more of a change at the headquarters in California. Jennifer, we do have the okay. fee now. Didn't, didn't we add that last time uh, as far as changing managers to cover your paperwork time and process? Yes, there is a $100 fee associated with this now. And I believe we submitted that with the application. And if not, then we can provide that. Okay. I emailed um, John, I believe, about it. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, he's one of my supervisors, but I can, um, so that was not included. It was can, not. Okay. But I, I was going to ask the select board to make this conditional based upon the payment of the hundred dollar fee for the town of Hadley. I'll make that motion that we approve this change, uh, contingent upon receiving the hundred dollar change fee. Second. Thank you. All those in favor. Aye. 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 <clears throat> Congratulations okay. and thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. Yep, you too. Thank you. Okay, and now we'll move on to the FLAP grant update. So it looks like uh, the Federal Lands Accessibility Program grant for Silvio Conti has been approved. So the grant is for $223,000 and a portion of Moody Bridge Road will be paved. David, do you have anything to add to that? No, well, we've been waiting for that federal approval for several years now and uh, finally have it. So now we have a project that we could move forward. Okay, great. And that won't open the road, it'll just pave the road that's open currently? That's correct. It'll pave the westerly portion of the road up to the driveway for the um, visitor center. Okay. So moved. Uh, and we're taking a vote to, to accept that grant? Uh, you've already accepted the grant. Uh, this is informational at this point. Okay. Great. So unmoved. So unmoved. <laughs> Any other <laughs> comments or, or movements on that? <laughs> <laughs> Nope, move on. Okay, so library, fire substation, and senior center updates. Uh, I don't know if anybody 
wants to go first, I'm glad Jane is here because uh, she can give us an update on the Senior Center. Uh, but hello, me... hi Jane. How are you? Good. How are you doing? Well, as of today, we're still looking at getting in at the end of the month. But I heard that the um, State Builders Association is going to ask Governor Baker to stop all construction. Whether he will do that or not is unknown. Uh, Jane, who, who's asking Governor Baker to do that? The State Building Association took a vote last night. Oh, okay. And they are, and it was 100% from what I hear of people saying they wanted to stop all construction to save their workers from the plague. Um, but they do not know if Baker will do that. Meanwhile, they're continuing, they're pouring concrete today. They're putting in the ceiling in the living room and dining room. Um, floors are going down. It's moving right along and it's so close and yet it's so far. Sounds like they're going ahead. Quickly get it done. Yeah. I hope so. Yeah, sounds good. Okay, thank you, Jane. Uh, Joyce, do you have anything on the uh, fire substation? Yeah, I had one more. I have a change order tonight for uh, PCO29. It's for $4,244.72. We did vote on it because it's under $10,000. It's a fire fill line backflow, uh, which we needed to do. Um, so I just wanted to bring that forth that that's what we had. Uh, I think it'll need your signature at some point, uh, Christian, but uh, okay. that's what we needed to vote on uh, this week. And we did for the financial subcommittee. So you don't need any vote from us tonight. You just need. I don't need one. I was just informational that that's what we approved. Okay. Uh, since it was below ten thousand, and that's all I have. And they're moving right along. It looks great. Uh, so hoping they're going to get a little bit done before anybody thinks about a shutdown. And lastly, Molly, do you have an update on the library? Um, well, <laughs> uh, nothing's moving right now, so um, I guess we're just going to have to wait and see when that situation resolves in terms of the work stoppage. Um, and so I don't know anything further on that front. David, I don't know if you've heard of anything. I've had no updates on it at this point. Mm -hmm. So we'll all stay tuned and see when they can get moving again. Yeah, yeah, a lot of... Uh... I think gear. well, you got it. You actually got anyway a two-week quarantine. Uh, when anybody thinks or whatever they have symptoms, and then you have two weeks of quarantine. So um, that's what they're probably looking at at this point. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any other items we have not anticipated within forty-eight hours of the meeting? Any updates there? No. Nope. David, you're good. I'm good. Okay. Um, and then town administrator report. Anything there to highlight? Uh, we've covered a lot of that information. Um, just looking at the uh, looking at the, uh, the the revenues and the expenditures through February, they look good. They're right within uh, expectations. Uh, March revenues will obviously uh, tell a different tale um, and too early to say there. Um, I am uh, casting about for models for revising the FY21 budget. Very, uh, very clearly we're going to see a reduction in the revenues that were projected that I presented back on February 19th. Uh, Dan Zadonik and I are working together to uh, come up with realistic uh, revenue projections that will be accepted by the Department of Revenue when it comes time to uh, set the tax rate. So we're working with them and getting guidance from them. 
Uh, and I will be presenting a revised budget in the next couple of days. I'm sure it'll engender a lot of co conversation. Um, and I think that's it for right now. Okay. Thank you. And then uh, any announcements do we have tonight? I don't have any right now. Just everybody stay safe. Yeah. Um, I'd like I'd like to thank Steve Lewis Subaru. We have received a car at the senior center, and it has been put into use today to deliver lunch meals. And so, once again, Steve has shown his support for our town, and just a big thank you. Yeah, thank he, is, you. he is one of our good supporters for sure. Yeah, yeah. No, thank you. That's uh, at least the second donation I know of by them this year. So thank you very much for that donation. Much appreciated. <laughs> Anything else? Hi, folks. Uh, it's Sue Glowatsky. Oh, okay. Yep. Um, my concern about the letter that you were going to sign um, for the commercial mortgage thing was that it didn't have any language in us extending the date the, the tax due date because the legislature still hasn't passed that bill and you folks don't have the authority to do that until they actually pass the bill. So that was, that was my question to Jennifer uh, or that was my comment to Jennifer that she uh, in the beginning of the meeting brought to you. So okay. I just want you to keep that in mind uh, because I I don't see the letter posted on the agenda, so that's uh, that was my concern because you so can't. So it looks like it's only forbearance language on the commercial mortgage. <laughs> okay, because yeah. I couldn't see it, Molly. Okay, yeah, and I'll I'll go through and read it one more time with a fine tooth comb, but I didn't see anything about property taxes. Okay. That's perfect. I just wanted to make sure that it didn't extend a due date because I believe that the New York bill did. And um, we don't have the authorization from the legislature yet to do that. Yes. And I did speak with Linda, uh, who was like, whoa, we got to, you know, rein this all back in. Uh, and we should have a financial management meeting on it, but we don't have the authority to do that yet. So, yeah, I didn't see anything in that letter that would affect the town's revenue right now. But um, okay, yeah. I I that didn't was, it was just I didn't see the letter. I couldn't re uh, you know I couldn't see the letter, so I didn't know what exactly it said. If it, it you know if it had some place in the body of it that it talked about real estate taxes. So that's why I chimed in. Okay, thank you, thank you. Okay. There's still uh, a lot of questions on, there's still a lot of questions on the excise taxes too. Just note that that mailbox at the rear door is, is there and uh, for all citizens so they can, can get a check or whatever they need to the yep. uh, tax collector's office. Yes, and you can pay online too. I did that uh, to pay my excise tax, so you can do it that way. And if I can just chime in, um, people have been putting cash in in the Dropbox, and our preference right now is not to handle cash at all. I mean, honestly, it's the dirtiest thing on earth. So. Um, I've been telling people when they call in uh, and tell me that they often pay in cash, uh, they can just go to the post office and get a postal money order. Do you have Do you have gloves in your office, Susan, in case you while you're opening your mail? I do, absolutely. Okay. Good, thank you. Okay. Um, I think that is basically the end of our open meeting. We are going to move into executive session. I'm too tired. What's that? <laughs> I 
said I'm too tired. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. So yeah, I'm looking for, to go into to executive motion session to move into executive session. Did that? Okay. Motion to move into executive session for the determination of DPW contracts and uh, what else is on there, Christian? I don't see it in front of me. Uh, litigation inspections department. Um, we might pass over that. Litigation HAP versus Town of Hadley. We have DPW personnel and DPW director contract negotiations. Okay, so moved and not to reconvene an open session. Yeah. Yeah, we actually have no litigation with the inspectors yeah. uh, departments. Yeah. So we'll, we'll scrap that one. So, yeah. but I do so need what, a second. What's, right? what's, what's left on that, Christian? It's the two DPW director and HAP versus Town of Hadley. Okay, so moved. Second. Okay, as chair of the Hadley Select Board, I state that the board has moved and seconded to enter into an executive <laughs> session and that I state that discussing the matter in open session will have an adverse effect on the town of Hadley, uh, complete a roll call vote, and we will not reconvene in open session. Yes. Roll call vote, Phil? Yes. Roskavitz? Yes. Junglo? Yes. Egan? Yep. Christian? Yes. Stanley? Yes. Uh,